In the heart of the woodlands, across open fields, and even in bustling urban environments, a folkloric presence reigns supreme. The Red Fox's fiery coat and wily spirit have earned it a place in legends. But beyond the myths lies a resilient predator navigating the intricate dance of survival by finding and pouncing on unseen food. Still, this legendary predator uses a near supernatural attunement to the earth to catch prey in life, death, and taxonomy. Death and Taxonomy, and sure 30 minutes of interesting animal information. I'm Joe. And I'm Carlos. Thank you to Cassie for the creation of our theme song. To hear more of Cassie's music, please search Cassie Michelle on YouTube or Spotify. And thank you to Johanna for the creation of this week's artwork. To check that out, you can visit us at our home on the web at aldetaxonomy.com. And a very special thank you to our patrons, to Jesse Raspolich, Carol Raspolich, Richard Kaspar, Lottie Aubrey, and Gray Hughes. Thank you so much for your support. It's greatly appreciated. Thanks for helping us keep the lights on. And today we're talking about a predator that will give Mouse Dutch Schaefer a run for his money. But more on that later. That sounds like a reference of something. Yeah, Dutch Schaefer is the name of Arnold's character in The Predator. Is it really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's clearly a Schaefer. I would be. Uh, I would. <laughs> I mean, I guess there are some hardcore fans of that movie but I feel like the average person would not know the character's name it's just Arnold Schwarzenegger right he's just yeah. that's, that's his he's just there I guess he could be a Schaefer because that is a German surname Germanic surname but it's not it's not like a, what's his name in Harold Harold what's his last name like I don't Smith know or something yeah, Harold Finkelstein or something like some some, some, <laughs> some like s- super suburban like American suburban. Well, if he's a Finkelstein, this. he could also be from like Germany or a Germanic country. Maybe I I just remember it not just, like this this you know seven foot Austrian is this is not his name. <laughs> um, but we're gonna uh, we're gonna call it here the Fox and the Found. And Sly Guy. Like Shy Guy? Sly Guy? Can you sly? Like a box? You could have also called him John Elroy Sanford. That's a thing. I have no idea what you're talking about. Uh, the, you know the show Sanford and Son? I do. The name of the stage name of, for the actor that plays the main guy that's always having heart attacks is Red Fox with two D's and two X's. I've never understood goofy stage names for actors. Um, like, this is Ice well, Cube. This is Common. I mean, they have, they're they like rappers, so that's rappers. their name. But, but like, this, the, you're an actor this... now. Like, you're a person. Put your name up there. <laughs> Why are you Common? <laughs> like, <laughs> um, uh, Well, this guy, like, this is before... He had to consider the SEO ramifications of being named a red fox. <laughs> <laughs> I just, yeah. Um, I think it's kind of uh, goofy when you're uh, a grown up with a nickname like that. Uh, and that goes for musicians as well. I'm looking at you, Sting and Slash and Sinister Gates. <laughs> Uh, just that it never gets old. <coughs> um, and the edge, really? You're an adult. Where are your parents? <laughs> um, <laughs> let's taxonomize the red fox, shall we? Not the Sanford and Sons actor, the animal. Um, the kingdom is one you know, love, and are in. The kingdom is Animalia. The phylum is Chordata class is mammalia this is one that i got without looking 
Um, <laughs> I already knew that the genus and species, w what those were. So I got the rest of them right. The uh, so class is mammalia. The order is carnivora. Because uh, you know that if it is a mammal and it eats, uh, it eats meat, then it is it, carnivora. Um, the, the family is Canidae, basically in the in the dogish family. Um, the genus is Volpes. If it eats meat, it's carnivora. Is not true. If it's a if it's in if it's a mammal and it eats meat, it was most likely in carnivora at least. If it's not a mammal, th then it's not in carnivora, <laughs> whether it eats meat or not. Anyway, the family's Deer candidate. Eat birds. The genus is Vulpes and the species is Vulpes. Vulpes, <laughs> Vulpes. So since we're in the business of naming things, it's time for my favorite part of the show. C -c 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 Critter groups. The part of the show where I ask you, Joe, a question. And that question is the same every time. What is the name of a group of this animal? Or what is the term of entry? Or what is the collective noun? We're, talk we're talking foxes here. And I don't... Th I think the last time we did a fox was the that snarky looking fox from Africa I forgot what his name was <laughs> the Tibetan was it the Tibet no that's the Tibetan wolf right no Tibetan fox uh, sure. Tibetan fox yes. you're right and we did the <laughs> Corsac fox last year so so I, I don't think we've done this term of entry yet but uh, so if you saw a group of foxes, would you call it A, a skulk of foxes, B, a den of foxes, C, a huddle of foxes, or D, a trick of foxes? A trick of foxes is good. Den, final answer? That is incorrect. Is it a they trick? They do live in dens, but they their, their groups are not called dens. Their groups are called skulks. Oh, okay. That's a pretty good one, actually. Yeah, it works. A sly fox skulking about. Yeah. A skulk. It's just weird because it's one of those, like, verbs that has been turned into a noun for a collective noun. It's like, oh, it's a... Uh, oh, I guess I can't really... Uh, a murder. There we go. No, a murder's a noun. So, I, I, I'm, I'm, I can't pull one off the top of my head here but skulk is one where it's like it's not a noun outside of describing a group of foxes but yeah it's a skulk of foxes would you like to hear what a fox looks like a red fox looks Sh like sure uh, a red fox is what you think of when i said fox <laughs> unless you <laughs> thought of lucius fox or red case, fox the actor good on you um or jamie fox I suppose there's another one. There's lots of foxes out there. It's one of the most uh, iconic animals. It is an adorable medium-sized cat dog thing. It has large, wide, pointy ears that stick straight up a long, thin snout with beady little eyes. Back, its back and head are covered in bright orange fur. Its cheeks and chest are white with a, a long kind of blackish orange legs and a bushy grayish orange tail. Um, but that is only describing one of eight different color morphs that um, a red fox can have, depending on how much uh, melanization their uh, fur has undergone. So there is the uh, the smoky variant, which I, I'm, I'm sure tastes delicious. Um, <laughs> there's the cross the blackish brown, the silver, the platinum, a platinum fox, uh, and, uh, amber, and Samson. There's a Samson fox. I mean, it's it's all they're all red foxes. They're all under the same species, but uh, this is different shades that their uh, that their coats can have. So some of them are self-evident, like silver or blackish brown, um, but it's just different. You know, one might have a black tail and gray legs or a silver coat all throughout or it. It must be pretty hard to tell these guys from like gray foxes, which are also gray sometimes. Um, 
but nope, different species. <clears throat> but what the the one that if if you've seen a fox in a in a movie or show or book, it's the main color morph of the red fox, most likely. But I said they're medium sized cat dog things. How medium sized are they? <laughs> How medium the are they? <laughs> Extremely medium. So medium. <laughs> <laughs> so mid. Uh, I keep seeing a video that's um, that's uh, that's about foxes, and it says uh, it's called "Dog Hardware Cat Software." Is what a fox is. <laughs> uh, yeah, that, that makes uh, a little bit of sense. Although I'd well, say their behavior is can be very doggish. At times. Well, welcome to beloved, the Beloved's Measure Up segment, the official listener's favorite part of the show, the part of the show when we present the animal size and dimensions in relatable terms through a quiz that's fun for the whole family. It's also, it is also part of the show that's introduced by you when you send an audio, audio of yourself singing, sing, I can't speak words, saying, Fox got your singing, tongue. Or chittering. I guess a fox might do a chatter or a chitter. Oh, there's Other so words, many things that foxes do. LDTaxonomy at gmail.com. We don't have a new Measure Up intro, uh, which means we get to hear from a fox and Carlos gets to guess who it is. There's so many to choose from. There so. are. And since Let's you've, see. Since you've taken to trying to guess it before I play it, I'm only picking the most obscure ones from now on. Is it going to be the Carfax fox? <laughs> That's a good option. Uh, without further ado, the listener's favorite part of the show. Don't turn around. What? Where do you come from? Where do you come from? What are you doing here? Canis lupus. Vulpus vulpus. <laughs> I don't think he speaks English or Latin. <laughs> <laughs> is that the fantastic Mr. Fox? That is the fantastic Mr. Fox. Uh, I've not seen that movie, but um, the I think some famous voice actors. Mm-hmm. And I've, I recognize the voice as being famous. <laughs> <laughs> uh that movie is, it, is like is that george clooney one, it's george clooney yeah yeah okay um that movie is like i don't love wes anderson's style of movie making but um that movie like it because it's uh stop motion it's very it suits his style suits stop motion really well and i like it that movie's re- really funny the problem I've seen like the little um, trailer that plays whenever I hover over it on Netflix or wherever it's on, and the stop motion is so rough that it's kind of that it's kind of turned me off to to it. Um, it is kind. I mean, rough. It, at least in comparison to like the like Leica stuff, or I mean, even going back to something like The Nightmare Before Christmas, it's like that's that's rough. But even that is better. Or less choppy, um, and then fantastic Mr. Fox. But maybe one day. I'll, but at least I'll it's like him. it. There, he's trying to make it look nice rather than what every other stop motion studio apparently does, and just like it, they, let's make it grotesque. Make the ugliest things they could possibly make. Yeah. Um, no. You should watch Kubo and the Two Strings. That's a pretty good one. And not everything okay. is. And it's 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 got beauty in it. It's not the the. <laughs> it's not all um, the the um, misadventures of Flapjack, on <laughs> on uh, <laughs> in the grotesque department. Um, I yeah. I, I actually made a little list of potential foxes that you could use, just <laughs> so that I remember. There's Nick Wild from. Zootopia. There's Robin yeah. Hood, obviously, from the old Robin mm-hmm. Hood. Mis- there's Mr. Fox from the Chronicles of Narnia. There's the fantastic Mr. Fox. And then, of course, there's Todd. 
Yep. Those were all contenders, but then I saw the Wes Anderson one, and I knew you wouldn't like think of that first. It's uh, also the only one I didn't recognize. <laughs> so, the other, all the other ones I've seen many times. So, um, let's talk length. Oh, I almost did Tails uh, from Sonic. Oh, I guess Tails is a fox. But I, it, all the clips I found were like him saying Sonic. Like, so you would know immediately, like... Oh. <laughs> I actually probably wouldn't have been able to tell you what the character's name was. I would have been like, it's the it's the fox from Sonic. Really? Um, you don't know the tales? The I've little never bro- seen I guess you were any... Never... I've never played a Sonic game. All little brothers know tales. Or watched... I never watched the Sonic movies or any of the TV shows. I've just never consumed... Sonic content at all. <laughs> this is not interesting <laughs> to me. Um. Anyway, well, let's talk length. They're between forty-five and ninety centimeters, or eighteen to thirty-five inches. How many red foxes go into the length of a cat of nine tails? Ooh. I was thinking about nine tails. The Pokemon. And then I looked up, there's a thing called that, right? But it's a cat o nine tails. Yeah. I think nine the nine tails is also like a Japanese demon. Uh because it's Or a, like a yokai. Yeah, it's part of like the Naruto thing where he I he think he is possessed by a fox spirit. So here's a hint. The Cat O' Nine Tales is an instrument of punishment for floggings that dates back to six, the 1600s in England. It is a braided <laughs> braided ahead. handle with uh, the ends that um, split apart into nine thin whips. That, um, that hint was very helpful because when you said Cat O' Nine Tales, all, I was just thinking of... I think they're just called cattails. The um oh, the thing that everyone wants to eat but also tastes really bad. The reed, yeah, <laughs> the pond reed. <laughs> it looks I was like, like oh, those are like six dog. feet tall, so it's like it's probably like two of them, right? <laughs> it's that that's not bad. Um, no, you're talking about a flogging instrument. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I mean, that can be probably a bit longer, right? <laughs> Have you ever seen a video of somebody eat trying to eat it like a corn dog? It does look like a, it does look so tasty like a corn it's dog. It's so cuz it's like a million tiny little bits and people eat it and it like turns to powder. And like they're just it's like it's disgusting. <laughs> I've it's never so seen funny. somebody try to eat it. I've also never tried to eat one myself. I don't know, I those need, could be toxic. Cuz I know in my heart of hearts that it's not a corn dog. <laughs> Yeah, it couldn't be because <laughs> of the could. curse of Adam and how hard it is to till the soil. There's no you, way wild you corn imagine dogs if corn grow. dogs just grew out of the ground like that naturally. <laughs> there would be no curse. <laughs> <laughs> Pre microwaved too. Oh, <laughs> yeah. From, from uh, heat from the earth. Um, yeah, it's it can't be that easy. Otherwise, um, we. Yeah, the definitely um, wouldn't have been part of the curse. Um, so we're gonna say nine feet for the cat of nine tails, which means three. I'm saying three foxes go into the length of a cat of nine tails. Final answer. Yes. The correct answer is one. Ah, short little thing. I'm picturing like a bull whip, I guess. In movies, you're all. It's always like bull whips that people like. People are standing like five, ten feet away from the people they're whipping in movies, but in reality, like you wouldn't. You'd stand right next to them. Um, Not if you want to get don't don't want to get blood all over you, right? That's true. Maybe you should use a bull whip. The the cat o nine tails is an instrument of punishment. I already said that. The cat of not, uh, it is 97 centimeters or 38 and a quarter inch. So it's like 1.1. Yeah. 
All right. Well, I, that's way off. Definitely not a nursing school victory. Uh, well, let's talk weight. Maybe you'll have better luck. They're 2.2 to 14 kilograms or 4.9 to 30.9 pounds. Wide 31. range. Um, how many eastern meadow voles would a fox have to eat to eat its weight in voles? Man, he's worth his weight in voles. <laughs> <laughs> the city of voles. Not all that glitters is voles. <laughs> That's pretty funny. I like that a lot. Streets are paved with voles. Here's a hint. <laughs> In That's my North favorite America. Shia LaBeouf movie, Voles. <laughs> uh, <laughs> by North favorite, America, I mean the only one that I can stand to watch. <laughs> Fury? Okay, Fury's pretty good. Um, a vole in, is the same thing as a field mouse. Did you know that? I didn't know it was the same thing. Voles look like mice, hamsters, and lemmings. But they have stocky bodies, and they usually sit on powerful hind legs. Wait, so powerful voles are the things that little bunny Frou Frou was bopping on the head? Yeah. <laughs> those poor voles. Little bunny Foo Foo. No, those were Meesey mice. No, he's, <laughs> he's, no, he's picking up the field mice and bopping them on the head. Oh, I think I'm, there's a different version from a TV show. They say Meesey mice. But yeah, you're right. They're, I've they're, never I've heard, heard that before. Sure. I've never heard that before, and I am up to my shoulders in children's uh, song content. Look up We Sing Little Bunny Foo Foo, and there's just horrifying, uh, like people wearing co- colorful animal costumes, and they say. Little bunny foo foo, scooping up the meesey mice and bopping them on the head. Interesting. Uh, my son has moved on to Zubumafu and actively asks for it, and I'm never looking back. That is a beautiful time in a person's life. Uh, yes, child's life. I, I'm having. I finally want to watch what they're watching, um, and also like. Sometimes I'm jotting down like, oh, that would be an animal to do. Is he still afraid of the claymation section with the... No. On this child show that's educational about animals, they're just making up fake animals. <laughs> well, it, it's funny because also at the zoo, they have this this lantern light thing that they're doing right now, which is really impressive, actually. And the, most of the lanterns are real animals. Um... In fact, some of them look real from a distance. That That's how well these lanterns are done. And then for a little while, they just had like unicorns and dragons and stuff like that. <clears throat> and it was like, but, but, but some these ones aren't real. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, this is not a real thing. We passed the jaguar. That one was, that, that, that was a lantern of a real animal. This is not a real thing. Um, but yeah, he, yeah. So he's no longer scared of the the claim claimation Zabu land sections. No, um, okay, good. It's just a it's just a joy to relive that nostalgia, um, and also continue learning about animals. So, um, all right, back How to the task voles? at hand. Could have voles way. I'm gonna say. Eight ounces, half a pound. Ounces are the heaviest thing, so it's probably way too much. They probably weigh one ounce, but we're going to go with eight. So I'm going to say 60. I'm going to say 60. I'm going to say 70. Just to just to give, put a little cheddar on there, because I, I think that maybe half a pound is too much. <laughs> so uh, 70 voles go into the weight of your average red fox final answer yes the correct answer is 274 <laughs> you were right a vol is around uh, 0. 0.8 to 1.8 ounces uh, 23 yeah. to 51 grams 
Yes, there we go. Grams. That I I'm every time we do this, I'm becoming more and more of an advocate of the metric system. <laughs> grams are good. I think that I th- I think ounces are way too big to be the 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 smallest unit of weight. I think seconds, even though everybody uses seconds, I think seconds are way too long to be the smallest unit of time. I'm ounces still are too pro big. Fahrenheit though. Fahrenheit is pretty good because I'm I'm I guess I'm all for like granularity. Break it down a little bit more. Cells each centigrade is too big. Mm-hmm. Fahrenheit allows you to be more precise because Celsius is so imprecise that it's like, at some point, I kind of want to be like, can you turn it up to like 14 and a half? I mean, can you imagine thermostat? centigrade 451? That book would be melting <laughs> molecules. <laughs> <laughs> Celsius 450? <laughs> That's uh, that's absolute heat right there. Um, <laughs> centigrade four fifty one. <laughs> um, <clears throat> all right, we're all good with the measure up. Time for some fast facts before we get to the the major car facts. Yeah. All right. So the red fox lives primarily in the northern hemisphere, but it lives all over the place. Uh, it lives in a large swath of eastern North America, all of Europe, most of Asia, even a smidge of North Africa in the Moroccan region. Um, and it also has been introduced to southern Australia, so it is an invasive species over there, uh, and a pretty raucous one at that. Given the fact that uh, it eats everything, it's an uh, it's an omnivore. Um, and because they live all over the world, the red fox has been shown to eat more than 300 different animal species, as well as several dozen plant species. Um, They need to eat at least 18 ounces of uh, food every day, which is a little bit more than a pound. Um, And they eat pretty much anything that's smaller than they are, um, as well as sometimes things that are bigger. But mostly they eat voles, like you mentioned, um, ground squirrels, hamsters, gerbils, woodchucks, gophers, small mammals is their, is their, is their bread and butter. Well, they <laughs> go well on with bread and butter at least. Um, but they'll also eat blueberries, blackberries, raspberries, cherries, persimmons, grapes, and they'll also eat grass, grasses and sedges, roots, things like that. Um, they'll eat, they, if they can uh, take down uh, a young ungulate, like a deer a or something like that, a youngulate, if you will, Carl Youngulate. <laughs> <laughs> um, That's gonna be my new rapper name. The the youngulate and the famous. <clears throat> um, then they will go. Yeah, they will go after the the young of. Uh, of larger animals like deer, uh, and they'll there's they'll also scavenge food. They will eat carrion, or the kill they scare off the uh, predators that have taken down larger prey and um, and uh, eat the eat the carrion. Um, males are called tods, hmm. and females are called vixens. Tods and vixens. Makes you want to open like a fox themed restaurant just so, so that can... I can put Todd's and Vixens on the on the bathroom doors like uh, blokes and Sheila's at Outback. Um, although, unfortunately, that would just turn into like a furry restaurant and I'm not about that. So. <laughs> um, so and also so because they live all over the world, they have all they have a very wide diet, but they also have a wide range of predators um there are leopards and eagles and lynxes cougars bobcats wolves coyotes owls lots of animals uh prey on the red fox 
Um, but researchers believe that they sometimes cooperate with other animals. They believe that uh, the, there's a sort of mutualism that exists between Eurasian badgers and red foxes because the fox will leave scraps of food uh, behind after it eats and the badger keeps the den clean. So it's kind of like one keeps the house clean and the other one brings home the bacon. It's just a it's a marriage from the, straight out of the 50s, right? Um it's the it's the incredibles. <laughs> uh but it's just Jack it's just uh Mr. Fox and Mr. Badger until Mr. Toad drives a car through their house. Um so they not only uh are preyed upon by other animals, but they also compete with other animals for food since they eat so many different kinds of food. They'll um especially carcasses that are left behind. So they'll they'll can they'll have to fight off like hyenas and wolves, other foxes, jackals, buzzards. Um, just when a when an animal goes down, everybody wants a piece. Um, and then the last thing I have is there. Remember back there was a viral video called "What What Does the Fox Say?" Mm-hmm. Um, which is just. The, it's funny that that video was like, yeah, it was like, what does the fox say? Uh, I I know what the cow says and what the dog says and what the horse says, but I don't know what the fox says. There, most animals, I don't know what they say. <laughs> like, it's it's uh, especially most like mammals. Like, what what do they say? Um, there's only like a handful of ones that we learn from a young age, which again, I am up to my shoulders in. Um. To animal animal sounds, um, but now going through like the animal book that my son likes so much, uh, I realize I don't know the vocalizations of most of them. And he asks about each one. He'll ask about what each one eats, where it lives, and um, and what it says. And it's like, I'm sorry, I don't know what the emu says. I don't know what the platypus says. I, I don't mean- know what the shrimp says. <laughs> Shrimp doesn't say anything. It says blub blub uh, blub, right? <laughs> um, the platypus. That's a good question. What does a platypus say? Well, did you find out? Did you look up the sound of a fox? Uh yeah. So uh, a fox says quite a bit. They have a wide range of vocalizations that span five octaves, uh, and they do a lot of different kinds of sounds, including barking, huffing, whining, shrieking, geckering which is like a rattling kind of sound, um, wailing, warbling, and chirping, um, which they will use. Uh, and they, they've they been split into two different categories. One set of sounds is, to, is for, it's called contact calls. So these are, these are the sounds they will use to um, locate each other if they're far away. Um, uh, and... The other section is interaction calls, which are uh, they communicate levels of friendliness or aggression. Um, So based on if they are coming up against a rival or something they need to scare off or a predator, they might use one sound or they're coming across um, one of their kits or um, a member of their skulk. (laughs) Then they might use a different one. So, and that's all I got. You can go uh, for in for for the for the fa- fast fox. That's the fast facts. I'll show mm-hmm. you the car fox. Well, let's talk about the major fact, which I which I am calling animal magnetism. <laughs> nice. You might be familiar with the way foxes will jump up in the air and come down onto prey snout first, even when their food is hidden under snow or vegetation but how do they do that so foxes have large ears that can help them hunt when visual confirmation of food is not available so researchers though believe that they might have another technique to precisely pinpoint their snacks called magneto reception and that's when um, Eric Lenshire gets married and they have snacks and uh, a cocktail hour. Oh, I thought that's when he, uh, 
because he's in the same building as you, the reception you get on your cell phone is just absolutely garbage. Oh, no, no, no. It's when, like, you it's go like, to ah, his man, office. Eric's here. We got Magneto reception. I can't, I can't pull up the recipe. <laughs> No, it's like when you can't search for homes on Zillow anymore. At the front desk. <laughs> oh yes, it's, it's when he's the major D. It's a magnetic <laughs> reception. Uh, but how do we possibly know this? That they have this magnetic reception. Uh, a 2011 research paper says that foxes seem to have better success when they are facing northeast when they're hunting. Same. Uh, when they're doing one of these diving. Diving mouse catching adventures. So attacks toward the north where cover is increased. Um, uh, they're more successful than attacks in other directions. So researchers ruled out other factors that might explain this directional preference, including the time of day, season, cloud cover, and wind direction. So this could be a case of magnetic alignment that enhances the precision of hunting attacks. Um, foxes likely use hearing as a primary means of hunting small concealed prey. <laughs> Did I say hunt? they use? Yeah, they use hearing. That, that's their, like their main go-to when they can't see what they're look what they're hunting for. But the magnetic alignment might help them judge distance precisely. So, and this is similar to the theory that migratory birds use magnetic fields uh, to judge the distance to the horizon. Uh, and salmon mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. Possibly use so, magnetic well, fields to find their way back to their home stream. I'm a little wary. That magnetic field is like dark matter. It's a placeholder for stuff we can't really explain. But, I'll get uh, it. It's magnets, right? It just must be <laughs> yeah. magnets. It's magic. It's natural uh, magic. So foxes, uh, it might work like, like this. Like the fox is able to estimate the distance moving forward until the sound source that they're listening to coincides with the inclination of the magnetic field in other words they're using both of the both hearing and the magnetic field to triangulate precise distance and so they'll walk forward until it like it pings i guess so like but what does that mean how does it how does the fox perceive the magnetic field so the paper suggested a few mechanisms for this ability including a mag a magneti mag magnetite based compass or a light dependent ra uh, radical pair reaction in the retina i don't know what those words mean but i know retina means eyeball that i just know that in any fruit salad you do not want a radical pair reaction <laughs> <laughs> pair as in two. Uh, so this <laughs> this could mediate the magnetic targeting system. Or this this could meet this. I heard it um, explained like a heads up display in their vision that helps them locate their prey. Like they the have predator. Google Glass. Yeah, which like so like. Literally on the their eyeballs, there's like something reacts with the magnetic field that triangulates with the hearing that tells of the distance. Sounds like we don't know what we're talking about because, well, I don't know what I'm talking about, uh, but uh, the it sounds like spitballing for the mechanism, but we don't really know how like a lot of animals that are said to be able to use magnetic fields of the earth to get around and judge distance. We don't really know how they do it, but um, they're able to do kind of amazing things with no senses we can perceive 
And without a sextant. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. And if you think about it, like, if you're hearing something underneath snow or underneath foliage, how would they be able to, like, jump high into the air and come right down on it? And they And they said that the success when they're facing northeast is like 75% of successful hunts happen when they're facing northeast. So, like, why would they need to face the same direction every time? Um, very intriguing. Uh, if only we could just be, like... Under like see a fox's vision. If only we so could. So if just you're turn if you're a, a vole scurrying under the snow and a fox is s- southwest of you, you are done for. Yeah, you need lead lined uh, coats, tiny little lead coats, or just like move in a cardinal direction until you're no longer northeast of the fox and then you should but if you move to too much then they'll just go they'll go old-fashioned and see or, you <laughs> or the fox will just orient itself so that you're True. uh still northeast but yeah that's all i got Can so basically imagine? magnet magic when they started talking about they might have a heads up display, obviously it's not like a heads up display, but it's like something in their field of vision that like twitches when they're in accordance with this magnetic field. What the heck? Sci-fi animals? Who did this? Yeah, it's, what is it? It's, it's like a cybernetic fox. <laughs> I'm surprised that hasn't been done already. Like Isle of Dogs. I mean, just in general. Uh, you know Isle of Dogs, but you don't know Fantastic Mr. Fox. I have not seen Isle of Dogs. I, I saw a poster of it, and one of the dogs had a cybernetic eye. And so that's where I went. <laughs> <laughs> it's an adorable adorable dog thing with a, with a that was half cyborg. So Made by the same people. Yeah, same Wes Anderson. In the same situation. style. Um, looks smoother yeah. though, a lot smoother than uh, the Mr. Fox though. By the way, foxes do not make good pets, even though they look like they would. They are wild animals. Uh, and the Crap Brothers always say, <laughs> uh, "Never get close to an animal you don't know," uh, and only only touch an animal if an adult says it's okay like zob you know like zabu uh did you i couldn't hear most of what you just said but uh did you did you end the episode with like zabu no i still have my ending (laughs) well do i can't hear you you can't okay so for you out there in podcastia for all of you Todds and Vixens out there in podcasting, yeah, expand your diet, find a nice badger to settle down with, and use magnets to get around like the red fox here in life, death, and taxonomy. Hey Taxonomy Titans, I just want to remind you that we now have a Patreon. Patrons can see full video episodes and get shoutouts on the show. But ultimately, it's a way for you to help us cover some costs and get even better. Still, reviews are the best way to help us grow. So if you haven't left one yet, we'd really love to hear from you. As always, thanks for listening and engaging. podcast (laughs) i heard all that i heard all that